Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. A lot of people have been asking about single brood management, and this is not going to be the most thorough video, but you are going to get to see this hive and how we have it reduced down to one brood chamber. Our flow is fixing to start. There's a lot of different things to consider if you're doing single or double or triple deep management. There's, there's a lot of different things. Ultimately, you, whatever system you use, you have to use it well. We have many colonies that are still in, in double stages. We have several that are reduced down to a single brood chamber. Now, if you remember, if you've seen the video, we actually have pulled some frames of brood and shakes of bees from this thing because it was too big, too early. And if you want to watch the video on how we helped keep this from swarming and really beefed up this cutout colony over here, then I'm going to leave that link up right here and you can see what we did and it's worked really good so far but we still have to get in here and check and make sure they're not going to swarm later because we still have a lot of prime bee season to go and colonies can get large so let's get in this colony we're not going to be going up in the honey super area very much there's not a whole lot of weight and what they're bringing in right now is mostly wild cherry i tried some the other day it's the most bitter nectar we produce in this area it's gross thankfully most of that is burned up by the bees in the process of getting ready for blackberry and clover and other things. All right, so we have a okay amount of bees up here. There'd be more if we wouldn't have taken so many out, but the nice thing is is that um, Colony in the Apame is doing absolutely fantastic due to beefing it up from this colony, and at the same time, this colony is not as packed. All right, and not wanting to swarm as aggressively, so I'm gonna move this one over here. You know, that's got a little bit of nectar in it. And then we have this next body right here. Look at this old junky box right here. This is its last year. Uh, we'll never put it back on again. Look at all this right here. This box, though, it's, uh, well, goodness, I bought this before Laurel and I got married. It's been about 11 years. And just think, folks, if I'd actually painted this properly and come back and painted it again, I'd probably still get it three or four more years out of it. But at that time, no one told me that I really needed to paint these edges really good. And because of that, you can see where all the rotting's going on in the corners and the edges, all those places right there. Now, there is a storm front coming in, and so the bees are a little bit more agitated. So we're going to need to... That's why I've got the bee suit on right now. Also, Laurel doesn't... The sound quality's gotten better with this new thing, but it, it, it deadens the wind noise, but it looks like a bear hide up there on the microphone, and the bees absolutely hate it. So we'll see how well that works out. There's a little bit of nectar weight in there. That's good. Probably that nasty cherry. All right, so here we are down to the single brew chamber, and... I only have, let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine in here. Some people really feel strongly that you need to have 10. It, it kind of makes sense to me, though, if you had 10, that it would give the queen more room to lay, so that seems like a pretty good idea, but I've had good success with nine. I'm gonna shake those off. Main thing is we want to see if they're starting any queen cells and also see if they're plugged with pollen. That's our problem this time of the year is lots of pollen coming in that the frost that we've had have really been kind of a bummer, but also it probably has slowed down the amounts of pollens that have been coming in. We still have plenty, but bees can get pretty packed with pollens. All right, so here we have a little bit of capped brood and a lot of larvae down in here. We had to take the microphone off. The bees just absolutely hate that hairy thing so it's not really windy so we took it off here we are so this is the first frame lots of larvae down in there we have some capped brood um, some people are like well that pattern's really not that good but one frame's not enough to tell the whole story um, especially you know the queens doesn't lay a full frame quite at a time but th there can be variables maybe there's a lot of pollen in there at some point so that that frame though if there's a bunch of frames that look like that I would be concerned but I can already look down to this one over to the next frame over and it looks a whole lot better. Yeah, these bees are loving the sprinkling that's going on today. Oh well. So there's a lot of emerging bees coming out of this one. You can see some cells that are not perfectly shaped and that's where the bees are tearing out. Uh, let's get it over here. 
So that, this is what I'm talking about. You just see that right there? The bees are just chewed out of that. I'm telling you what, these bees just love following and blocking all the shots. All right, so this looks a little bit better over there. This looks very nice right there. A lot of emerging brood. There's been a lot of bees come out of this, so this frame looked really great yesterday. All right, we're going to quickly set that down. I didn't see the queen, so set that right there and give them a little bit more smoke. We have a lot of forager bees that are coming back in after this pressure change and you know, rain's driving them in. And they're just wonderful to work with. Not a whole lot of weight down here, which is exactly what we want. We want all that nectar weight going up. We want the bees to cl be clearing that room out so the queen can be doing this. Doing exactly this. Decent bit of brood over there. A lot of drones down in here. And on that frame over there, I am seeing what looks like food stores. Now, what, one thing I'm looking for is also, you know, is to make sure that there's not a frame that's clogged up full of honey or pollen down into the center. There's lots of pollen coming in, so I'm not worried about pulling a frame, maybe even freezing it. But we, you know, these frames, is the, all that brood's emerging out. The queen's able to go over there and lay that up. So that's really great. So let's get over here and uh, see what they've got in the middle. Now the temperature is about 70 degrees. Wow, okay, look at all that bee bread right there in the middle. A lot of capped brood in there too, but this is a frame that I would consider pulling, not necessarily from the colony, but bringing this above the excluder. It's not like I'm going to be extracting this frame for honey or anything like that, but it's something that I can replace with a drawn comb. Lots of bee bread up in there. Queen can't lay that up. And this is just something that I do to decongest the brood nest if I'm already here. It's not like I have a set schedule to go through and pull frames. I'm just checking to see if there's a swarming impulse. I don't see it at all. That's partially because of that video where we pulled bees out of the hive and decongested things. And we also uh, gave her plenty of space down in here. Wow, that looks really good. So there's lots of eggs down in there. Giving her plenty of room to lay. I'm not seeing any indications at all of them wanting to swarm, which is excellent. Look at all that that's been emerging out. This colony is, is growing. I'm telling you, if you came in here a week ago, the population was quite a bit smaller because of all the bees and brood that we removed and gave to that other hive over there. So I'm just going to peek in here just a little bit more. And I probably am not going to go all the way over. There's really no reason to. Um, honestly, you don't have to even do this. I'm doing this for the video's sake, just kind of so you can see things. But honestly, um, a lot of times you just crack that bottom box, tip it up, look down below and see if they're trying to raise swarm cells. And if they are, then you need to go and inspect it like this. If not, drop it down, put everything back the way it was, move on to the next colony. So. You know, in the videos, it seems like it's a long time. I'm trying to explain things and show you what I'd ideally like to see. This is exactly what I want to see. But honestly, we'd already be two or three hives down the road at this point. Especially, you know, when Laurel's not having to hold the camera. You know, she, she makes me look bad, you know, all this kind of stuff. We were running through them, some, building some Jester nuke boxes. I'd already done more than she had. And uh, she'd come over there, starts doing a few. She's like, you want to race? I tell you, women just like to show up, man. <laughs> And uh, she beat me about like 20 seconds three times in a row. It's really frustrating sometimes. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna go like just a little bit more. I just can't help it. I'm already here, gonna do it. Seeing lots of drones in here. We got a decent bit of capped brood over there. Oh yeah, lots of larvae up in this one. This is an old comb right here, folks. Lots of... This is an old comb. Oh, there's the queen right there, down at the bottom of the frame. You know, and she's not that large compared to some of the queens that I've seen. But she's doing a really good job. 
doing an excellent job. All right, we're fixing to do a switcheroo here, all right? And then we're gonna cut the video. Pretty decent bit of bee bread on this side, some calf brood. All right, so we're gonna try to put most everything back the way it was. I won't get it perfect, I know, but I just don't see any issues with it myself. As long as it's warm, they have plenty of clustering space. We're not doing anything crazy. It works very well for me. Okay. Stick the eggs right there, and so. Now, what, one thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this drawn comb, this brood comb, and uh, we're gonna be dropping it down right next to these other eggs in the center. We're gonna be removing that one that had a lot of bee bread and not removing it from the hive completely, but we're going to be taking it out of the bottom chamber. And that's gonna ensure that she has even more room to lay. Our honey flow is fixing to really start. And I really feel like getting control of the swarming situation before it happens, just like in the video I left above, really helps tremendously. So this is the frame that we're bringing up. There's the bee bread. We could give this to another colony if, we, if I wanted to. I really don't want to though. I've already swiped a good bit of bees from this colony. I want to make a lot of honey off of this hive. And as long as nothing crazy happens, they're definitely going to. So then we're going to take this frame right here. Place it on over. So this queen's got plenty of room to lay. The bees have done a fantastic job keeping the honey out of this bottom box. If you added all the nectar that's in those top three, there would be quite a significant amount. I would say maybe a deep's worth of honey. but it's all spread out right now and that's what's so important is to get that nectar spread out where they can dehydrate it down now let's make sure that i get the excluder back on that's kind of important now isn't it all right excuse me all right and i've got multiple different types of excluders i really like the metal ones the, the ones that are wood bound are nice but they want to rot a little bit so you have to paint them really good i thought about wax dipping them but i, I know that the wax is going to cling to that metal a little bit and make it a little bit too uh, hard for the bees to pass through. Now this is the box. We're gonna be dropping that frame in. We'll be removing one out of this one. It's not very heavy. Okay, so let's find a frame to remove. We're gonna probably go for one of these on the outer edge here. Need something over in this area. Let's probably go for this one. This second brood chamber is likely going to be something that I'm going to be using for a split after the honey flow. So this is, this is the frame that I really wanted to grab. It's a young comb and it has some, you can see all that nectar down in there. And uh, we're going to pull this one. So I'm just going to take this, shake those bees off. And then I'm gonna grab this other frame. And now they're still going to be getting all of this capped brood emerging. It's gonna go down there and help raise more bees. This is important because this capped brood is going to be emerging and working during the main honey flow. That's one of the reasons why I don't wanna take it. I'm gonna go ahead and shake these off so it'll be easier for me to slide that down without crushing any bees. Okay, now some folks talk about always scraping this and keeping it clean during this time of the year pfft, nah i don't I, I can't do that because i'm going to come back two weeks later inspect again or whenever i do and they'll just burn it all up with the honey flow that's been going on so yeah um that's pretty much it right there i just wanted to kind of show you that the single brood nest can work but it's not just slap an excluder on and expect things to magically work for you nothing in beekeeping is that easy unfortunately but it does work really well I think it's it's great but then again I've done double deeps and it's worked very well also so I'm not saying you should do this but it is an option out there but you know Ian Stepler lets his run into doubles for a while and then he reduces them down we let them run bigger or we split them to cut them back and then you know we uh, then we break them down so anyways if you have any questions on what we've done here we'll try to do a little bit more into detail when we get to our honey production yard and uh, show you uh, reducing colonies down into singles. But uh, it's, it's mainly just keeping them at the size where they're not too large too early 
and then I'm um, giving them plenty of space so when that flow hits all of that nectar is coming up into here and that queen still has plenty of room to lay and occasionally they still want to swarm that's why we go down there we inspect and see what's going on but all you have to do really is tip that bottom box look underneath if they're developing cells in any stages then uh, that's when you start your inspection but if they're not you just shut the lid thanks for watching the video